welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for what has been uh, a pretty emotional but a beautiful send-off to our own Ewan Stratum as we delve into a very important awareness month and something that I think we're feeling a little bit of right now situationally, but I think a lot of people feel this on a much grander scale. It's Stress Awareness Month, and it's been held every April since 1992 to increase public awareness about both the causes and treatment for the modern stress epidemic, and it is an epidemic. Millions of people around the world are experiencing high levels of stress, and it is damaging to their health. And since stress is a normal part of our human existence, nobody is immune to it. Unfortunately, it is therefore important to arm ourselves with knowledge on the topic to help, uh, to help us unpack exactly what stress is and how we can manage it. Please welcome our trusted medical <laughs> professional. Doesn't look stressed at all this morning, Dr. Morning. Darren Green, morning. and the educational psychologist specializing in tension, stress, and trauma, uh, Lamise Gassant. Uh, Lamise, welcome to it. Thank you so much for joining our, our roundtable discussion. Hey. Thanks, Greg. We love having you here. So let, let's start with the basic question of defining what stress is and understanding what causes stress. Yeah, I think on a continuum of dealing with daily activities in lives, in our lives, the, the increased load of what we handle in dealing with day-to-day -day activities mm -hmm. varies. It varies according to the, uh, the seasons of your life, the, the timing of, uh, of your life, etc. And uh, with that comes then increased load, workload. And stress mm -hmm. can be biological, can be psychological, can be social, on all three levels, as I think I've alluded to before. And uh, the effects of that on the human body can actually enhance performance to a certain degree. So a certain amount of in, in increased In a live television environment, yeah. <laughs> can, uh, can enhance you to actually get up off your butt and do something about something. Mm -hmm. But in this context, we're speaking about prolonged experience to chronic stresses or an acute stressor that tipples the scale hmm. and leads you then, obviously, to dire effects. Yes. I'd like to add to that that children also experience high levels of stress mm. and their lives are very busy. You think of a grade one child who's yeah. got three bags to carry to school. <laughs> there's an academic bag, a sports bag, and for there's sure, a bag yeah. for tutoring. Yes. And, and so they have a lot of stress. And when learners are stressed, very little learning actually takes place. Yes. That's the effects of stress. I mean, it's a scale, and I'm glad you used that word because it's yes. very difficult to, to kind of identify what is normal and what is... But when the reaction, that's generally when we can kind of see the red lights. What are some of the psychological effects, results of too much stress? Not the positive kind that yeah. motivates, but negative, the, the negative. Negative effects mm. of stress. So if you think about what effect stress has on your, on your system, you have what's called the uh, survival response or the fight or flight mechanism that's, mm. that kicks in. So when anything is, is perceived to threaten you surviving, your body will respond to it, either by alerting you that there's danger out there or alerting you to the fact that you need to change something or move, move something to reduce your chances of dying prematurely. Hmm. And that's exactly what it's about. So in terms of alerting your fight or flight center, there's a place in the brain called the amygdala, which is very involved with, uh, with, with coding and value tagging to different situations. Mm -hmm. So when that starts buzzing, the amygdala tells you that you need to either move towards something or move away from it. And that's part of the stress uh, response to actually protect you from dying before your time. All right. Well, we're going to keep our lines open. Well, our lines are open officially. 021430 Give us a call. When we come back, we focus on work life and the many stresses or the sources of stress at work. As gray we hair. Give you gray <laughs> hair, man. <laughs> 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 it's very interesting. Yes. <laughs> it's my feel good work this show. Is one of the most interesting topics table. I think we've ever done. Yeah, uh, and you can be part of that conversation. Zero two one four three zero nine double eight one. We're talking about stress because April is Stress Awareness Month, and as we've learned in our earlier conversation as well, is that children also experience a lot of stress, and so we're trying to find ways of understanding the causes and then hopefully how to treat it. So work life is what we're focusing on right now, and trying to understand the main sources of stress at work. What do we find? Mm. Well, if I if I think of teachers, the demands of the curriculum. And just sitting with 40 or even more than their children in the class and 40 different personalities, 40 different learning styles. Noise levels. Noise levels. <laughs> <laughs> that one kid. Yes, that one, that one kid. kid. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, of course, everybody talks about discipline. Yeah. But then teachers also have home lives. So they have their own their relationship issues, issues with their children, issues with their spouses, divorce, finances. You forget that sometimes. Um, right? In your experience, <laughs> Mm. Situ does situational outweigh your interpersonal, the stuff, so if you come into the work environment with something going on at home, mm. something you've had a fight in your, your personal capacity, mm. 
Does that outweigh what's happening in a class like those bigger things? Mm. Or is it anything out of your control? I'm looking for a pattern here that we can try to, mm. to wrap our, our head around. What, what generally weighs more, do you think? Now, you mean for someone in a professional capacity yeah, yeah, yeah. like that? from a workspace. It's, it's yeah. very, so the temperament and personality of a person uh, would definitely have an impact on what is affected more, work life or school, school mm. life as yeah, such, yeah. in this case. So you must imagine that if you are a very much a person that is uh, led by, if you're emotionally driven and, and, not, and not so task driven, you might really, so if there's a, a, an improper relationship or a conflicting relationship somewhere, it might affect you a lot more adversely than it would mm. someone that's a task driven person that actually can actually switch off their emotion and deal with it later. Some mm. people can't. They can really are led by, by their by ticking those boxes. Yeah. Correct. Yes. So some pe I think some, some mm. people can mask it a lot better, yes. what's happening at home, and carry on mm. with the task at school, if they were teachers, for example. Mm. Uh, and some people can't. But it would depend on your inherent temperament and your coping skills and your, your, your tools that you've mm. developed over, over years. Mm. What are some of the most stressful industries to work in and maybe yeah. ah. also give us some ways in which you can <laughs> help train, train not train not yeah. <laughs> no, go, clearly I'm biased I'm gonna say teachers I've, yeah. I've, I've been um, in a job before teaching like nursing and that's very stressful yeah yeah, yeah. life or yes. death <laughs> yes. yes and so a lot of my Excuse clients me. come from different fields other than teaching and so yes I acknowledge that all of those jobs are stressful mm -hmm. but I don't think there's any job as stressful as teaching where you have 40 or more souls in front of you wow. so even if you were top Excuse me, Darren, the top neurosurgeon. <laughs> but you're only dealing yeah. with one, one client at a time, and you might have a team helping That's, you. Yeah. Mm. But with teachers, you are alone in that class with 40 children. For how many That's hours? Better. Yes, yeah. there we go. So clearly I'm biased. <laughs> teachers, teachers are overwhelmed. Teachers, we love you. Yes. We love you Big and shout we out appreciate, to teachers. appreciate you. Yeah. Yes. Interesting, they say uh, one of the highest uh, suicide rates due to stress mm. uh, as a career is dentistry. They wow. focus what? on one patient, mm. then they focus on the mouth, then they focus on the tooth, then they focus on the hole in the tooth, and then they go in. So you're working <laughs> in a very, so mentally, and they, and psychologically, it's a down very... Down the rabbit hole, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting dynamic, but you can Whoa. read up on that, that's very interesting. All right, well, we'll do our reading Whoa. up on that Whoa. during the ad break <laughs> a little bit. In the meantime, our lines are still open, 021430 Give us a call and engage in the conversation, which we will continue after this break. It's my feel good show. Ooh, the stress levels around this table How right come about you got now. The stress <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 you can have it for now. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast <laughs> express on SABC three. Uh, we've got our <laughs> our friend in all things health, Dr. Darren Green, joined by educational psychologist specialising in tension, stress, and trauma, Lamise Hassan. We're talking about stress because April is Stress Awareness Month. Yeah, it definitely mm. is. So, I mean, it, it, it's such a broad. Um, subject matter to, to discuss, but let's kind of hone in on the physical, especially at this time of the year, the yeah. immune system. How can stress exhibit in the body and compromise your immune system, open the doorway to get sick? It's quite simple. Mm. How does your body cope with stress hormonally? What happens? Cortisol. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about cortisol. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your body has natural mechanisms that are stimulated from uh, a gland in the brain called the hypophysis or the pituitary gland. Mm. And that has a knock-on effect to all the different uh, organs and glands it's further down. Inner systems. Mm. And then what happens is it releases cortisol. So you increase your stress. Your body's response in dealing with that is cortisol. Because the hormone has effects on things like strength, endurance, muscle strength, and, and so forth, energy levels, and so forth. So cortisol is your natural response to any, anything stressful. Steroids are cortisol, for example. They're when people take steroids. I was just about to ask you, can we buy so cortisol? Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, the different subgroups. So it's produced in the ad adrenal glands, adrenaline, mm. adrenal glands, corticosteroids. That's where they come from. Mm. So understanding that's quite important, but also to remember other hormones are also involved. The thyroid hormone responds to stress as well because it controls your appetite, it controls mm. your meta metabolic rate and tempo as well and has an effect then on all the different cells. So understanding that cortisone and cortisol, they suppress your immunity. Uh, often there's a drop in your immunity. So that's why when people are stressed, they get things mm. like cold sores. Mm. The herpes simplex type one, which mm. is not the sexually transmitted one, cold sores, cold sores. they manifest. Uh, mm. Zoster, when you have zoster, chordorus, Mm. Uh, that they call it in Afrikaans, uh, is varicella zoster virus, mm. activates when you run down and your immune system is compromised. Mm. So long-acting uh, uh, steroids, as in therapy, as well as things like diabetes, and then obviously chronic stress, all lead to your immune system being dampened. Yeah. Let's quickly touch on what happens when you're stressed out and how it affects things like your eating habits, your 
uh, interpersonal relationships with people, your self-confidence, it does impact on that, doesn't it? Yes, it absolutely. does. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So if you have a lot of adrenaline in the body, as Darren said earlier, you have the fight-flight mechanism going on. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talk to people, I always say it's like your body's panic button has been switched on. Yes. So yes. now anything and everything will be a trigger. So just think of a relationship and somebody just says something, mm -hmm. oh, my bum's too fat, and then you're off. Yeah. Because you're already in fight-flight mm. mode. Mm -hmm. So it, it will affect your memory also, because there's more no adrenaline in the body, yes. which affects the memory. You need no adrenaline for memories to be laid down. But now you stress, there's too much no adrenaline in the body. And so you're forgetful, you can't focus, you can't concentrate. And you see how that can affect yeah. the relationship? You could forget birthdays, you could forget important things. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you could appear to be very hyper, yeah. but you're actually in fight or flight mode. Yeah. So the effects of stress on the body. The irritability is also part of it. You yes. know, your short fuse, how you're not, you're not normally again. Mm. You might have a threshold, for example, to be yes. tolerant, patient, listen carefully, mm. and then not suddenly the, the, the tables are turned yeah. where you respond and you're active. Quite you become quickly. a completely different person. Yes. Let's just say it, man. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, I'm not going to ask you, does my bum look big in these? Uh, <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we, we're going we're gonna to continue now. We'll, we'll look at the positive side of what you can do mm. about stress, physically, emotionally, and what you can do to support each other. We're not in this alone, guys. We're not in this alone. We're going to do that after heading to the kitchen. It's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> all right, we're back again at the round table. Uh, we're talking all things stress because April is Stress Awareness Month. This has been the case since uh, April of 1992, in case you didn't know. Well, so I, what, I wonder why it was 91 a really stressful a very year. very stressful yeah, year, yeah, and they realized we had to find a way of working through it. So 0214309881, give us a call to engage in the conversation with Lamise Hassant and, of course, Dr. Darren Green as well. And we we're mm. looking at, let's try and find practical ways in which you can help yourself decrease the level of stress. When should we see a doctor? Just on a physical, as a first step, like, oh, I'm feeling this way, I need yeah. to see a doctor. I think often uh, you're alerted to the fact that you are stressed by people around you. So your relationships can become problematic in terms of your frustration tolerance, your conflict situations. Your relationships, your, your, your friends, your children, your spouse, they all notice the change. And when they give you that feedback, the question is, what are what you going to do, do with it? Mm -hmm. And I think when you get that feedback, it's important to act on it uh, responsibly to maintain those relationships. Physically, sometimes your blood pressure can go up. You can be f physically feeling unwell, drained, tired, lethargic. Uh, when you find also your thought process is being negative, like almost like you're wearing that's mm. dark sunglasses with everything you look at, yeah. basically. Mm. Uh, that's when you need to obviously maybe consider there might be a medical basis for why you're feeling the way you're feeling that needs to be excluded. And if it's a psychological stress-related issue then that needs to be put on the table and uh, and also there are also obviously more specialized ways of looking at specific psychological stress that oh. Lamise uses yeah well. Lamise yes now look when teachers stay absent from school a lot of they start to get ill a lot then we sort of explore no. yeah so we have a checklist and we look at the symptoms and we try to educate people you know, psychoeducational talks about stress we do a lot of teacher wellness workshops so teachers to understand the um, symptoms of stress how it manifests in the workplace and what they can do about it. So teacher self-care is big on the list for the mm. education department right now. One thing from both of you with the little yes. time that we have left. What's the best way to do stress? Can I be rude? You can be... <laughs> no, honestly, well, I mean... Uh, sex is free and it's a very good stress reliever. But a lot of people are not going to believe me. Then I'm going to have to say yeah, I mean, breathing we... <laughs> or any body modality, any exercise, yoga, meditation, mindfulness. And I get the sex thing, I mean, having an adult very above board yes, conversation here, but that's something intimate and, and therapeutic and yes. physical about that, yes. so that I get that. No, no. Yeah, so, yes. yeah, I was going to say exercise, if you mm. can do one thing, I would say exercise and mm. mindfulness, where you take aside 15 minutes twice a day. Mm. Just to, in, to, to get yourself into a quiet space mm. to actually just breathe and focus a lot on, on where you are at mm. and what's going on in your life. Yeah. But even if you don't have 15 minutes, if you just do it for one minute, start with one minute. As much as you possibly can. As much can. as you possibly yeah. can. Yeah. It will still have a calming effect on Absolutely. the body, the mind, and even the soul. Doc, I hate to say it, but I think more people are going to choose the measles. Six <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, <laughs> what's the population? <laughs> and laugh, people. Yeah. And laugh Listen. as and much as you it. can. Yes. On that note, thanks very much, Lemise, and thank it's you very much, Dr. Darren yes. Green. Thank you. Um, producers, could we please have a 15 minute ad break? Yes? No? Okay, no, it's only going to be two minutes long, uh, but we'll see you after the break. <laughs>